right, hello. Welcome to Adventures in Lollygagging and Friends. We are playing Deadlands tonight. We are continuing our Blood Drive uh, campaign, episode two. Uh, sadly, we are down our Canadian superhero, uh, our vigilante. He will be back in a couple weeks, but praise Jack. Uh, praise but, Jack. Uh, praise Jack. Jack. Exactly. But uh, we will we will persevere, and uh, when he comes back, uh, Matt can meet a uh, a whole bunch of new characters. As yeah. I am going to kill everybody you now see on the screen tonight, and oh. uh, yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah. Well, thanks for the warning. Yeah, it's good to know. Okay. I uh, Go I decided that even though Matt couldn't make it tonight, I wasn't going to rebalance any of the encounters. I'm just going to say, <laughs> ah, fuck it. It's fine. Mm -hmm. That's too much mm -hmm. work for me. I don't. <laughs> I've done that before. Yeah. <laughs> <You're> That's fair. <laughs> Oh goodness. Uh but yeah, I mean I I do think that like I'm due cuz you guys rolled really well a, uh, a couple weeks ago in our first game and I didn't. So I feel like that's going to swing the other way at some point and uh mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh but uh let's see before we get into all that, why don't we go ahead and let's uh let's do some intros. Uh so yeah, who are you? Who are you playing? What if you got something to plug? Go right ahead. And uh that's that. So we'll start with uh with Jeremy. Hello, I'm going to be playing Dr. Byron Cusper. I'm just a sentimental gentleman from Georgia and a dentist who's here to take care of my friends and any wild stories you've heard of mad science or bedlamites or pure chicanery. Don't you believe it? I'm a good man and your friend. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, absolutely wonderful. What is uh, what does Byron Cusper look like, by the way? I, wasn't, I can't remember if we really got into like, what do they physically look like? I see your I token and I know what it looks like, but I want to know what you describe him as honestly in my mind i picture a younger vincent price but with a georgian accent oh that's delightful that's a wonderful combo actually it's really good yeah you know because he's okay. too, like he's he's not a tiny scientist he's still big enough to look like he could do something mm -hmm. but he's not like a big bulky man he's just kind of tall and yeah okay yeah all right uh jack dawson tonight will be uh he'll be doing some chores because i mean all of you are going to be doing chores that's pretty much the how this campaign starts you just do a bunch of chores i just wear you out with chores and i kill you but jack dawson mm -hmm. is going to be doing uh he's got some important stuff to do um there's a maple tree nearby that needs milking because i'm pretty sure that's how that works uh so yeah that's what he's doing i saw it on pbs <laughs> <laughs> i believe you then <laughs> Uh, and then uh, let's go down to uh, to Adam. Adam, tell us about Eustace and yourself. I'm playing Eustace Ellsworth. <laughs> Don't mu have much to say beyond that, <laughs> but I'll give you L's worth a lot of trouble. And uh, if you got a drink, well, we ain't got worth in any fighting. Yep. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, I'm from San Antonio. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and if 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 you don't speak Spanish, that's Saint Anthony. <laughs> we are fairly close to your hometown, because uh, we are just a co what, like a hundred miles west, I think, of San Antonio, something like that. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, close. yeah. And your as backyard. Far as as far as appearance goes, it is exactly like the image. I mean, um, he's wearing these weird bandages on his head, and um, they don't look quite right because he's actually got some metal plates in those bandages. He does that to kind of look like he's been in some scraps, but then when he headbutts you, it hurts even more. Um, Zooming in so people can see. <laughs> There you go. That's Eustace Ellsworth with the pinch. Yep. <laughs> oh, that's cigar. great. Yep. And he's Seems got like a tough uh, combo. You know, a full beard except for the chin, as they did in the 1800s. And uh, I'm jealous because I could never grow facial hair like that. So, yeah. I mean, and why don't why not smoke a cigar? You're wasting your time if you're not. So, thought yeah. I put one on there. Fair enough. Yeah. Oh, that's the wrong one. All right. Speaking of facial hair, Chuck, how's it going? <laughs> it's me. I have facial hair. It's going good. Uh, what I'm playing John Ives, uh, perfectly well balanced, normal gunslinger. Um, yeah, just a pretty boring, plain dude. Not a lot to him. 
Yeah. Yeah. You have a sidekick too. Do you remember that? I do. Oh, what's yeah. the kid's name? Little Timmy. Little Timmy. Little Timmy. Who uh has a sudden interest in human flesh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know where he picked that up. That's really no weird. idea. No idea. But you know how kids are, you tell them not to do something, whatever, and suddenly right. that's exactly what they want to do. That's what so. They want to do. It's what happens. Shameful. Yeah. Yep. All right. <sighs> Yeah. And you're a you got uh you're a, you got like two pistols, right? That's your thing. You got the dual yep. pistols. I got the okay. dual pistols. I took the uh two gun kid okay. edge. Uh once we get the next advancement, I'm gonna grab ambidextrous. That way I shoot twice and there's absolutely no penalties tied to it. Right on. Awesome. So yeah. Very cool. So uh so basically Chuck just told me that you guys will never get an advancement because uh that may, that seems like it's gonna be too difficult for me. So if I let, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Just my bad, know. everyone. My bad. <laughs> uh, speaking of cheating, uh, Melissa. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tell us about your character. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Well, <laughs> Jeff gets himself on. Uh, there you go. Uh, playing on a tabo. Uh, she is a. Um, kind of a combo of a wrangler and a ranch hand um so she's kind of local to kind of the area ish i think we figured out last time um she's got more her edges are you know kind of in the direction of like born in the saddle beast bond brawny Mm -hmm. um hindrances thin-skinned heavy sleeper illiterate and loyal um she always has a harmonica on her and you don't want her to sing Nice. <laughs> I have a bunch of these. I got a I got a stream deck, and so this is this is the worst thing. Like, there's this is gonna be dumb stuff like that the whole time. Buttons to push. Yeah. I got there me a go. harmonica sound. Now. Harmonica. I know. Enjoy. This is the last time you're gonna get it because you're gonna have a new <laughs> character next week. Uh, okay. Uh, so let's get going. Uh, last week or last time we. Uh, we met the characters. We met everybody. Uh, you all, I think it was two groups that showed up together. I think it was Cuspid and Dawson were together. And I think the other three kind of made it in uh, to town roughly the same time. Town is Sutter's Flats, which is about 100 miles west of San Antonio. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's nothing. There's nothing to it. There's no train station. There's nothing that goes through it at all. It's just this small couple buildings, three buildings specifically, that kind of serves as a hub for a series of ranches. So there's a bunch of different ranches and ranchers around the area. And sometimes they kind of come here as a hub. Um, you all met there and you, you went to, to wet your whistles. Uh, I hope I use that right. And in, uh, in the lonely crow, which was the, the tavern in, in Sutter's flats. Uh, when you got over, there was a Sunday, late Sunday morning, there was a drunken preacher that was trying to, to give a, to give the sermons and uh, there were also a couple, uh, a couple Bayou Vermilion Railroad uh, railroad workers who were causing some trouble. Uh, they were kind of shooting their guns, breaking some glasses, uh, kind of terrorizing the three people that were there to actually hear the sermon. Uh, so you all, um, you all took it into your own hands and, and and showed them what was right. And I think Eustace killed a guy with a shot glass, so that was always fun. Uh, you left one person alive. Uh, but uh, otherwise you just completely, you killed three Bayou Vermilion Railroad representatives, left one alive, like Harry, I think we called him, or Larry, something like that. And um, or maybe it was Henry, I can't remember. Uh, but um, but after that, uh, you, uh, you met Bill Sutter, who came over and uh, kind of talked you guys out of trying to take the fight to them and being like, nope, you might be biting off more than you can chew. Why don't you come work with me? There's safety in numbers. I don't like them either. So he invited you to join his ranch, the Lazy S, his cattle drive that he's planning. And he was going to pay you all uh, a decent wage, 30 bucks a month, I believe it was. Uh, he gave you the use of a handful of horses. So if you didn't have horses, now you have them. You started uh, working around the ranch, doing some chores here and there, met a few people. Uh, we met Grimy, a guy who clearly has some ghost fever issues we met little timmy who will soon have some flesh eating uh human flesh eating issues yeah and uh, a couple others as well um 
but yeah, that's a uh, that's that's that was basically what we did. So we're gonna start up. Uh, oh, thank you very much for those bits there. Uh, what are we doing with bits again? Are we doing free Ben? Oh, that's right. Ref refresh your bennies if you haven't already done so. You all start with three, I believe, and I start mm -hmm. with like a pool of. I think since there's four, three, four of you tonight, I think I start with four. So I have four I get to play with. I'm still working on that. And uh, there's a bunch of different ways to spend bennies, uh, soak, you know, soak rolls, things like that. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. All right, so let's get going. We are going to get started. We're going to say a couple days have passed uh, as you've been working for the last few days uh, around the old, uh, the old, uh, the old ranch, doing a variety of chores similar to what you've done before. Uh, you've been, you know, lots of stuff. Ranch life is hard, and it's not the most glamorous. Some gathering and bailing hay from the fields. You've been oiling tack and saddles. You've been, you know, separating ranch hands whenever they get into a fight, that kind of thing. So it hasn't, it's, it's been, it's been eventful, but it hasn't been particularly dangerous. It's been a nice kind of cool couple of days. But about a, not quite a week after you've been with the Lazy S, uh, the foreman, uh, Luke Canton, it's the guy I described as sort of like a cowboy, Sidney Poitier. Uh, he kind of pulls you all aside, and um, he says, uh, "He says uh, y'all been uh, y'all been pulling your weight so far with the odd chores and such, and uh, I appreciate that. You know, you didn't, you didn't, you you're doing right by us. It's a it's a good thing. But uh, how about a proper job or jobs as they were?" You see, uh, so he comes up, he kind of collects the four of you. Uh, Jack kind of goes off with uh, with Anna running the running errands or something like that. But he pulls Praise you Jack. all aside. Yep, yep. It's one of y'all got to tell me what that's about one of these days. But uh, but anyway, uh, any y'all got any experience with uh, with uh, with horses, breaking them, such, that kind of thing? Not in the kind of way you're talking about so he starts laughing at, so he starts laughing at first like yeah this is gonna be fun and then he thinks about what you just said wait what other kind of way nope never mind i don't want to know i i just i don't want to know this at all so anyway here's what you're gonna do you see them six mustangs over there in that their corral okay mm -hmm. well you see, we uh, we need a whole mess load of horses uh, for the upcoming drive, and we've been breaking them for a bit. But it's about time that the four of you go ahead and get your hands dirty, and uh, and I and, and those those horses are a particular kind of ornery, which I think makes a lot of sense, because from what I hear and understand, so are you all. So uh, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna get on in there. You're gonna finish that job. Got gotcha. you. Uh, and I want you now, be careful with that one right there. And he points to this one specific horse that just, when you look at it, looks a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger. All the other horses are kind of like keeping keeping clear of it. No one, no one's really kind of going going near it whatsoever. It's like, and it, it's a this beautiful kind of like black brown stallion of some kind. And it's got like these fiery eyes, not literally fire, but they, you know, they kind of got this anger in them. And he's like, well, that one right there, uh, that there we're, we, we've, been, we've been calling that one Devil Eyes. Uh, at least that's with some of the other hands. Because ain't nobody made any lick of difference with that one, okay? Uh, you, you, you be careful of that one over there. That one's a, that one's a bit of a handful. It's superstition, if you ask me, but, uh, but tr just be careful. But anyway, you've got that job. Take this stuff out. Take your morning. Work on the horses. And then, you know, afternoon comes around. I need you all to go ahead and head out southwest down by the Rio Grande. We got stray cattle all over the place. Okay, we usually let them let them wander in the winter, get all nice and fat. Uh, well, now it's time to get them back home. And uh, we got a few that are missing still. Folks have been moving around, picking them up and everything. But there's some buck, box canyons down there. Why don't you all go ahead and start looking, see if you can round a few of them up. All right, sound good? Yeah. We got and this. he just, and you see, he just grins, and he like takes like a drag on a cigarette. Like, yeah, 
this is gonna be fun. <laughs> he kind of flicks it off. And you see as he like, he doesn't leave. He just kind of wanders and he just takes a little bit of a seat as he gets to watch you guys as you try to, to break some Broncos. Mm. Okay, so you wander over. You got these six horses. One of them is this just monster of a beast. The other look, and the other five don't look like weak by any stretch. You see them flailing around every now and then as you're walking up. You see one or two ranch hands. Maybe Grimy gets thrown, smashes off into like a, a plank of wood by the fence and just climbs on out. And he kind of just looks over and like, that's it, I'm out, tag, you're in. And he just gets on out of there. So what we're going to do is we're going to do what's called Bustin' Broncos. This is just one of these special little mini games that, uh, Ooh. that are in this. So each one of you, uh, basically you get to pick a horse. So does anybody want to take a chance on breaking Devil Eyes, or do you all just want to take one of the normal ones? Anna would be up for Devil Eyes. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Nice. Oh, argue with I have that both Born bit. in the Saddle and Beast Bond, so I okay. feel like okay. nice. I've got some help with this. <laughs> so you see... Uh, you see, as as Anna kind of wanders over towards Devil Eyes, you hear Luke, who's sitting on sitting on a perch, kind of overlooking it all. He just kind of does a whistle. Hey, Bill, she gonna try Devil Eyes? And you see Bill kind of come out, and he's kind of kind of washing his hands. He's just kind of pulling his pants up as he's coming out of the outhouse. Javier from the uh, uh, you know the the cook of the the cook of the camp. He kind of comes over to everyone's just sort of eyeing it down. This seems like some kind of rite of passage, maybe whatever it might be. So here's what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. Whenever you try to break a horse, you can uh, you can attempt once per day. It's like a quick encounter, basically. Uh, there's six total horses. One of them's Devil Eyes. And normally, this is just a riding roll. Uh, but you can, if you if you think you can make a case for a different one, a different skill, like I'm happy to hear a different skill, but normally it's just a riding roll. Uh, if you have certain, like there's certain intimidation edges, like menacing, for instance, that won't apply because it usually requires like a human kind of human understanding. So, but some of them might, um, but you're going to roll that riding test. You're going to see how you do based on how you do. There might be some consequences. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and that's it. And you get, again, you get one shot at this per day. Okay. And so the born in the saddle edge gives a free re-roll on riding rolls. Nice. That's actually great. Okay, you're the, you are the perfect person probably in the group to, to do this. And then Beast Bond, characters may spend their own bennies for any animal under their control. So I would imagine at this point, I this animal would not be considered mm, yeah, under Yeah, that doesn't control, apply. So. But the first one definitely does. Yeah, so you basically yeah. get two cracks at it. Yeah, that's very nice. That I do. So nice. Anna walks up as if like there is absolutely no doubt in her mind that this isn't gonna work. Like she is a Wrangler ranch and this is just going to work. Okay. This is gonna go perfectly. Of course. I've, seen, I've, you. Seen, I've seen you do it every day. So you guys watch by the way, as now there's like a small crowd that's now gathered around Luke and it looks like they're laying bets here and there and they're all changed. Like, like you see like little Timmy, he's like the, he's like taking the bets. He's like two to one on the Miss Anna, two to one on Miss Anna. And they're like, I'll take that. And they kind of keep, they're like changing out coins and stuff here and there. And they're like betting rations and stuff as well. Like I bet you two days uh, 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 of cattle collection that she gonna get thrown within the first ten seconds, and so it's just back and forth and back and forth. And Anna is going to kind of make us like she at first was like, yeah, of course this is gonna happen, and then she kind of sees what's going on, so then she kind of takes it slow, and so she's like walking a circle around Devil Eyes and is just kind of like playing along with all of this, you know, kind of attention that's going on here. So writing rule. Okay. At a minus two, uh, because it's devil eyes. Rest of you will not have that penalty when you try it, but devil eyes specifically is a minus two. And can... (laughs) Um, It's a good idea, Caleb. Can Benny's do anything just in a roll? Can I spend a Benny to do anything with this? No, I don't think so. Okay. That's exactly how I thought it would go. Uh, so I rolled a critical failure. Oh, okay. no. But she does get a free re-roll, right? Yes, because yes, Benny's can't re-roll 
a crit, crit fail, but your specific thing can. So you got oh. bailed out by it. Oh, goodness. Okay. Oh, goodness. Well, it's a good thing you have that ability. Uh, that's for sure. Huh. All right. So the, now it's a three. Okay. Which is a fail. Because of right? the minus two. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you guys watch as Anna gets on. And, and immediately within the first two seconds, it looks awful. It looks like she's about to get thrown. Like, it looks like she's, like, hanging off to the side. It's just, it looks terrible. It looks like he's about to just just hip check her right into the side uh, the side of the, the, the crowd there. But she manages to stabilize herself. Right, you know, rides devil eyes for a good, you know, eight seconds or so, which is, which is definitely respectable. And then you see her just kind of get thrown off the saddle at that point. And, and she just goes, like, <laughs> flopping down. <laughs> <laughs> into the mud at that point and you see all the way in the back over by where everybody is they're they they're like oh see i told you i told you she could no come on it's devil eyes what's wrong with you no one bets on anybody over devil eyes and so unfortunately you have not uh you have not been able to uh to break devil eyes uh, yeah. but the rest of you uh you can i mean you, you can either take a shot at devil eyes but you do have six that you have to do uh, mm. So you can either take a shot at Devil Eyes or you can try to do any of the others. I'll walk up to a different one okay. and uh, I'll just stand in front of it for a while looking at it. Like, hey there. Hey, partner. Uh, world's a tough place out there and then all those humans not taking her easy and shit. Uh, the rest of them expect me to do something I want to do. So, uh, I look down at the, the rock that I have and I'm like, I don't want this shit. I pull out stuff I just call the good shit and I take the cork out, drink a little bit and I, I hold it right in front of the horse. So I'm trying to just get the horse to trust me, even though it just doesn't. With with Rotgut, you're trying to no no with him. the good shit. The good oh, with shit. the good with the good shit. Okay, yeah. So you're trying to bribe <laughs> the horse with booze. Okay, I love it. Okay, this is the it, language of Eustace. Okay. Uh, all right. So you're gonna try to do that, and then you're gonna yeah. try to ride the horse at this. Is there, now, so, I'm trying to make a case for rolling persuasion. Rolling persuasion. You know, doing with, a little horse whispering. With some horse whispering. Okay. <sighs> okay. Is this just like because you have nothing in the writing skill? Is that why you're doing this? Oh, no. I totally have the writing skill. Okay. I just want to use persuasion. I think it's hilarious, actually. So let's do it. As you as you just start to like waft the, the, the rock out, you pop the cork out and just sort of, and it's like. <laughs> it doesn't like it. I just take it away and I, I hold my hand out, you know, if it'll let me pet it on the face uh but uh yeah we'll see it lets me touch its face go ahead and roll let's we'll see what happens so you kind of hold the you hold the bottle you hold the bottle of rocket out you uncork it it's new. it seems really interesting and as you go to reach your hand out to try to pet it it immediately like snaps out like it's gonna bite your hand and you have to whip it back at the last second before you lose a finger. Oh, then, hold on there. Hold on there. It Ooh, starts to take, flail, does like this Take, crazy take her whip. easy as I, as I want to use a Benny on this. Oh, the re-roll? Yeah. Yeah, go for it. So, oh, you should be able to just click the button and it should let you spend it. There you go. Oh, did that? No, I didn't do it. Okay. Uh, he just examines its teeth. This is exactly what Cuspid's gonna do. It's even worse. <laughs> this time it actually, like as you as you try to reach out a second time, this time it actually gets your hand. No, uh, but it lets go. Shit. It get it lets go up fast enough to where it doesn't actually like leave a mark or anything. But you can see that you probably maybe you had some like work gloves on or something like that, and there's a big chunk of it missing now. And so you got this big old hand, 
like you got your pinky fingers kind of sticking out because like your gloves have now been ripped as it takes it and then just starts flailing left and right knocks the rock gut kind of out of your hand it goes stumbling around in the dirt Hey, that was the good shit and then it just starts going over and hanging out with devil eyes at this point okay oh for two guys oh for two who's there next uh, let me take next because I think Dr. Cuspins is going to be hilarious. And I don't want to have to follow that up. <laughs> I'm probably going to I'm going to fail terribly, but <laughs> so uh, I want to pick out one of the horses and I want to stalk it like a wolf stalking prey and just sneak up behind it and leap up onto its damn back. Just I don't know. Try and ride it. I guess I don't fucking know. Okay, you got this beautiful like chestnut colored horse it's just it, it's 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 like it's one of the you could tell that like it's one of the rough ones and every now and then anytime anyone gets get like, get close it just kind of rears its head and kind of goes goes crazy but like when no one's near it it just walks around like it's just this majestic beast you know it's not as big as some of the others but it's spry and you can tell that it's it's kind of kind of got a more slender frame uh but in the mix of, of all of the different, you know, animals that are in the area, as people are kind of bringing them and, you know, taking them and going them, and they're trying to kind of use that sort of distraction as maybe it's currently, like, spending some time, like, watching what happened with, with Eustace and the other, and it's focusing on that. You just want to try to sneak up and leap on top of it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I just want a writing test. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. On the bright side here, so there's a couple different things that happen. So I should say we're gonna we're gonna do like we're gonna do bumps and bruises all at the same time because Eustace and Anna both failed. So we'll talk about that in a minute. But for you, you manage to hop up and you ride it around for a bit, and it almost looks like you like at one point like it it the horse just sort of calms down, and you get this feeling that you've got it right. You've got it, and you're just, you're just, you're just following around. It's like everyone's kind of clapping, all right, all right. But you can tell, like, there's a few of the ranch hands that are around. They're kind of got this grin on, and they're just like, you just hear them say, hey, "She's tricking another one, isn't she? I don't think he's smart enough to realize that she's actually training him. Ain't no other way around." And then when you yeah. go to get off, like, I, like triumphantly, she just kind of yanks the. Uh, yanks the bridle away from you and she just starts trotting away. You don't get hurt, but you get the feeling that there's some mind games going on here and there. But it might take a little bit more work than that. So I should say, by the way, that like you need a success plus raise to like fully, mm, to fully oh, get it. Okay. Success just keeps you from taking any damage or fatigue or whatever, uh, but it allows you to keep trying. It doesn't let you ruin everything. But so far, I've... Okay. You, you could tell that she like kind of turns around and looks over, looks over her shoulder at you. You just stare at each other for a moment, lock eyes, just for the slightest moment. You think like she's kind of gives you just a little bit of a, like a respect nod, like, but no, it's a horse. Horses don't do that, and just kind of continues to trot away. Okay, All right. take it. Okay, uh, and then Doctor Cuspid. Yeah, I think. In theory, statistically, he's a smart man, but he doesn't always make the reasonable choice. Sure. Now, I have to say, I don't have any experience in breaking animals as the rest of you do, but I have the feeling that it's just it's just wrong to see these fearless, majestic animals and want to break them of that. No, I think we should embrace it. I think we should encourage it. I think we should then gain their respect by identifying that we are one with them. So I think I'm just going to walk up to old uh, Ojos de Diablo. <laughs> and I actually have a power of mine, one, uh, an invention of mine that works with a function very similar to the mouth bit, except normally you do a mouth guard for a person, but I can adjust the wiring for his bits. And what I would like to do is possibly use the relief spell, which normally can both remove shaken or, or stunned or even get rid of your fatigue and just kind of, I want to supercharge him and just let him be his best self. This is devil eyes or just any any old horse? Devil eyes, of course. Going I'm right go for devil eyes. eyes. I think any roll against devil eyes is a minus two. Like so, with any, any roll that you have to roll is always going to be minus two. Is he's just that? He's just that step. That's fair. Okay. And then so he will pull out 
what looks like a little, you know, kind of steampunk battery with a couple of Tesla coils on it. And he kind of like wrenches it up a little bit. There's some wires that he like has set up. It's, it looks almost like a taser, basically. <laughs> that's ready to just shoot out and like attach to the metal parts on the bit. But what I can do is I can spend more power points to do additional recipients and I can hit all six horses. Oh dear. Oh, goodness. Okay. Oh God. All right. So... <laughs> so he just goes out there and he's got this crazy taser gun and you see him line up two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve 10, 12 little wires all ready to just shoot out. <laughs> Okay, so walk me through, like, so walk me through how this is going to work then, again. I so it's not necessarily the normal use of the of the power, but right. it's basically it would it remove any fatigue they have if they're shaken at all, if they're stunned at all. It basically the way his invention works is imagine if you bit like normally it would be a mouth guard for a human, but he's going to okay. attach it to their their bits, and it's just okay. going to do a current and just supercharge them because it's going to send this weird mad okay. science energy through their teeth into their skeletal system and just supercharge them okay all right it's a bad you know, idea is there anything you need to roll for this i do yes i need to roll my my uh mad science okay yeah ro go ahead go ahead roll your mad science science and then worst okay. case scenario what i'll do is i'll give them like some kind of resistance thing that's fair all right so i'll spend the extra six or extra five because there's the initial and then, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and I assume I'll just do the minus two. We'll, I'll assume it should apply to all of them. Uh, I'll use a Benny. Okay, do it. Ah, oh, man. Oh, my God. I think this <laughs> is the night. Okay. It would have worked if it wasn't for that minus two. Does the, does the initial, I don't know if the initial four would have worked on the others, but. Uh, the initial four would have worked on the others and that they like, like you still need a raise to kind of bring them over to mm -hmm. your side. But what I'll say is this, I'll say tomorrow, the next time you, everyone tries, if that like just cusp its presence in bringing that device out is going to sort of have an effect on those horses. And so everyone tomorrow will basically get the, the equivalent of a support action so you get a, everyone will get a plus one tomorrow the next time you guys try to do because like other than other than on devil eyes because devil eyes mm -hmm. isn't affected but the rest yeah. of them are kind of i'm gonna say it's gonna have the opposite effect it's not so much that like you've calmed them but like you've almost that scared them a little bit or in the, in the sense that it's like they see this here as a as a as almost like an intimidation factor, like just the the sheer zap, you know, this this strange bit of electricity is sort of coursing and zapping through them. Uh, so everyone will get a plus one tomorrow, uh, the next time you try. Is that fair? Does that sound reasonable? Sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. I feel yeah. like they would be like, I don't know what that is. Well, that's the idea. It's like the first one's free. <laughs> <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> <laughs> just picturing this okay so that's that's your morning you spend so much of your morning on this uh but two of you got kind of beat up in the process so eustace and anna um both of you got a little beat up uh eustace they kind of the, the horse that you were trying to bribe with booze nearly nearly bit your finger off and uh, you nearly broke all your bones as devil eyes just hip checked you into the side uh, of this kind of is sort of corral area. Uh, so both you need to make an athletics roll uh, for bumps and bruises to see if you accrue any fatigue from this. There's my good roll. Uh, oh, dear, that would have been perfect. Yeah, <laughs> athletics. <Right>? Yes. <laughs> Man. Oh, wow. Both of you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, Remember like they threw it. We were trying to do the thing. <laughs> Yeah, so it never like you like all like it, it, it. You basically just had to dust yourselves off here and there. Like uh, nothing, no lasting damage. Maybe just a little bit of embarrassment in front of the in front of everybody else, or maybe a little bit of the rock gut spilled out into the dirt. But nothing, nothing lasting and physical in anyone specifically. Uh, but at a certain point, you know, they like the rest of them just be like, all right, all right, you, you, you can't you can't be working all day, and then you got to give the horses time, you know. So you guys get some get some lunch, but you get like a second half of the day now. And so, so Luke kind of comes over and he just says that, 
He's like, all right, it was noble attempts, noble attempts. I told you, Anna, that you're going to get yourself killed. You better be careful. And, and Dr. Cuspit, I don't know what the hell that thing was, but if, you know, if you make any of them sterile, we're gonna be we're gonna have a little talk about your wages, okay? Because uh, there's a few very very fine looking creatures in there, and you know we don't want to ruin any bloodlines. You got that? So just be careful. Be careful with that, will you, please? Oh, sure. I assure you, nothing will be sterile. If anything, I promise you, they will be virile. Why? Well, I, I don't know quite what to say to that, to be honest, but uh, thank you, I think. And uh, Mr. Ives, uh, you've been holding out on me. I thought you were going to, like, eat a horse or something, but I think old Bessie there might uh, might have a little bit of a... Uh, go, getting a little sweet on you. She uh, she never quite was that friendly with anyone else, so... Well, the you... real secret is to lure them into a false sense of security before you make your move behind you like little timmy's like okay so gotta gotta lure him into a false sense of security okay and then make your move okay got it like he just gonna get out of here boy don't you got something to do as he's just constantly trailing eyes every now and then taking all these life lessons uh but finally looks like okay all right all right now you got a second half you got plenty of time before light get on out there don't get yourselves caught now a couple things i gotta tell you here you don't want to come back empty-handed, all right? Y'all, uh, y'all can scrap with the Bayou Vermilion as much as you want, and old, uh, old Bill ain't gonna bat an eye. He don't got no problem with that whatsoever. But neglecting duties and losing his cattle—that's the fastest way to call down his ire upon you, and you don't really want that because he might end up getting tossed from the drive entirely. And well, he might not do it in a nice place. It just might be. Right in the middle of nowhere. So anyway, that old man's got a mean streak, you know. He's tried to bury it, but it comes out every now and then, especially when people ain't doing what they're supposed to. So head on out. south. Go head, take the southwest vector on that way. We got everything kind of... We got a couple different groups all around right now. Now, most of the cattle, they like to, you know, they like to, you know, eh, congregate near water. But some of the hands that were out the past few days said they couldn't find none. So... There are all these tricky little box canyons out that way. I suspect they're probably down there somewhere. Just get as many as you can. Come on back. It's going to take a couple days still. We still got a few more weeks before we're leaving. So just make sure. Treat them well and bring them back. Do your best, okay? All right. And try not to get yourselves killed. Okay. All right. I see. So you guys uh, you guys leave, leave the ranch. You start... You get you get the loner horses that you've been given, and you start heading southwesterly. Okay. Um, and so while what this we're doing is gonna, this, you're yeah, gonna go see Anna, um, because like this is kind of a point of pride for her, and she kind of felt like she got shown up a little bit, and so um, <laughs> Anna's horse is um, a black horse named Bella, and so you're gonna just see her, kind of like. There's no reason to be doing anything fancy, but like while, you know, kind of we're getting on the road, you're just going to see her start to kind of do some like different trotting and just kind of, you know, going off and just kind of doing little things. And she, this is all just her, you know, kind of like saving face and her, you know, kind of skills and abilities here. She needs to show off a little bit. Okay. So, I mean, one of the ways you can show off, first of all, you guys got to find yourselves some of these stray cattle. So what this is mechanically what this is going to be like first of all you guys can decide do you go together do you split up you're welcome to do either it's up to you I would say we should stick together for this okay I'm inclined to agree with you Miss Ives honest thinking if we're trying to recover animals that have spread themselves out we should also spread ourselves out and herd them back to a central area like a search pattern. Sounds about right. Okay, so you're splitting up. Yeah, I see what's going on there. Anna would go off separately from. Okay. Mr. Eyes so and Mr. If, Cuspid. So if Cuspid and Eyes are together, Eustace, do you go with Anna? Do you go by yourself? Do you hang out with Cuspid and Eyes? I see you know well, how many groups are in. That's all. 
Hey, you doing your own thing or you want Aloysius and me to come along? Uh, I think it's better if we split up, but if you're more comfortable, you can hang out with me. I don't think we should all four go together, though. That seems inefficient. Hey, where are we going? That way I know where to go on my own. Uh, we're just looking for, we're just looking for strays. Oh, all right. Well, I'll just mosey on over. You go a little that, more west than me. That, north, east, south, west. You got it. There we go. All right. Okay. Come on, Al. I'm going to treat it like two groups. I'm going to treat two and two. Like he's close enough. Nice. I'll treat it two, two. Okay. okay. So each group, basically, you get the role of survival um, at minus two to try to locate some. Uh, some of these steer. The better you do, obviously, the more you, you get, and we'll figure out what happens when you find some. Um, you're welcome. So each group has to roll it. So it's just one roll per group. So one for each pair. Uh, the other person who's who's not rolling can do a support action. So you can kind of describe what you're doing. So like, essentially, you guys are encouraged to describe the scene or how you two, how each pair is going to go about searching for some cattle. Like, like, what's your tactic? What's your strategy here? Oh, Eustace will start going. <laughs> He'll start just, you know, making all sorts of noise like that. Okay. 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 All right. How is your survival, uh, by the way? Because uh, that's my worst. I'm not, I'm not that smart. Nah. Uh, I've got... Uh, survival smarts d4 me too so all right i stay uh, trained bill eustace why don't you roll a persuasion test uh <laughs> as your support action and then anna can roll survival all right yes he's doing a performance yeah i think it makes sense perfect uh so you get a plus one on this anna so you're gonna have a mat so the modifier right now you're at is minus one total um what is and and how is Anna making use of Eustace's <laughs> cow calls? Um, she is going to um, just make sure that she doesn't roam out of earshot of the sounds that he's making. So she's gonna okay, kind of circle around. So I'm just gonna roll it straight, and then we can figure out the minus one. Yeah, that's so still a success. Four. Yeah, so you still result. got a four. That is a success. Nice. Go ahead, and go ahead and roll a d12 for me, Anna. That's a seven. Okay. Seven. Oh, you didn't say seven, did you? I did say seven. Oh, that's the worst. Of Bring it on. It is. Oh, geez. What did I just do? Sorry, I just completely screwed up my notes. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Anna Eustace, you're you're kind of mosey on about. You're heading down a couple hours away from ranch. You're weaving in and out of these, you know, these these like you said, box box canyons. And you uh you 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 periodically look over at Eustace, who's just mm -hmm, over and over again. And at a certain point while you're watching him, you suddenly hear an actual cattle sound. Like you do you do suddenly hear it. And then you hear like following that, you hear shh, 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 shh. And as you kind of weave around this this sort of outcropping here, you can see that there's a there's these two cattle that are kind of laying down and there's this small little like vagrant boy, like sitting there right next to them, and he's just sort of like hand feeding him what looks like big old chunks of hay. And one of them is just every now and then going, mm -hmm. and he's just constantly trying to like hand feed these things. And that's what you guys see when you pull up towards where this, this, uh, this mooing is happening. I'll let you guys think about what you want to do, and we'll go over to the other guys. Mm. Uh, so Byron and John, what are you guys doing? What's your plan of attack here? 
Real quick, while it's just the two of us, I wanted to say, Mr. Ives, I greatly appreciate uh, uh, your your willingness to, to bring me those pig's teeth the other day. That was very kind of you. You know, they are very intelligent and very social animals. They 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 demonstrate cooperation in a fantastic effort. And I, I'd like to share something that I made for you. Uh, I've made some oh. some cufflinks from those pig's teeth. I've, I've treated them, of course. That's awfully kind of you. And basically you see like he, you've got some pig teeth cufflinks that have been, he's done something to them to where they have a similar bluish purple color as the thing that's on his necktie. Well, that's mighty kind of you there. I'll wear them all the time. Of course, of course. I don't uh, think I've ever had someone give me a gift before. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciated your, your, uh, your sharing of that. That was a, a just a hit home. Um, right. I'm afraid to tell you, um, as far as any real life application of skills towards the uh, steering of steer, I have little, but I have I've read books about it. I've, I've read about grazing habits and, uh, you know, that sort of thing. I have a journal from a veterinarian. Uh, listen, I figure hunting a cow is no different than hunting anything else you just gotta look for signs that it's been through and follow them okay so why don't you hang back keep your eyes open and i'll keep my eyes on the ground see if i can find any signs of these things wandering through it, i suppose the because I, I, I doubt i can really justify using my science from book learning that i've read of no. veterinaries for a support role i'll take it absolutely i'll take okay. anything that makes sense for sure I mean, you might look for anything, you know, you, you might look for signs of injury, you know, something like mm -hmm. that. You might look for stool, whatever it might be. That's all stuff you might be able to get. Also, if you don't, if you're not already at Max Benny's, uh, go ahead and take one for your, your pig's tooth cufflinks or whatever that was. That was, uh, that was nice. awesome. So nice. yeah, in technically by the system, like you can spend Benny, you can spend more points to help affect other people with certain things, but I think it's more fun to have given like some actual mm -hmm. thing to people. Yeah. I just like the idea. It sounds great. It's that's right up Cuspit's. Uh, oh yeah, Cusp that's yeah, how he shows perfect. appreciation, for sure. Uh, why don't you roll your science? All right, science. You need a four, and he gets it, and so that means eyes will get a plus one on his survival roll if you can pass. I do. Yeah, no problem. You get a plus one, uh, so, so it means the total modifier, John, is uh, is a is a one, is a minus one. Excuse me. So roll my survival at a minus one. Yes. Got a four. Okay, that's exactly nice. how much you need. Uh, go ahead and roll a D D twelve as well. That's the big one. Eleven. Okay. Oh God, of course. Okay. You guys, um, as you're hunting, right? So at a certain point, you guys find, probably we'll just do what I just said. You find like a fairly large, large bit of a stool, you know? It's got this horrible kind of terrible smell about it. You got flies buzzing around like crazy. Cuspid kind of gets down, does a little veterinary action, <laughs> tries to assess how old it might be. You know, there's a lot you can tell from scat, whether it's the, uh, whether it's the coarseness of it, whether it's how dry or wet it is, scat tells you everything. Mm -hmm. And it does. And you get the sense that this has got to be somewhere between about a day and two days old. It's not like immediately fresh, like it hasn't happened within the past few hours. Okay, class. I got you. Don't worry. <laughs> I got an idea. Uh, there's a, uh, you could tell it's not, it's not completely fresh, but certainly within the last 24 hours. Okay. And, and once you pick up that trail, Ives kind of looks around, you find what looks like a, a series of, of, of these large kind of hoof tracks and kind of piece it together. This, this has to be, you know, this has to be cow. This has to be cattle. But then you start noticing some of these other tracks too, which kind of peculiar, and you're not really sure what to make of these. They look kind of more humanoid, boot-like, footprint-like, like somebody doesn't quite 
You know, they don't like the, the, the feet just don't quite look right. And as you follow these tracks, you guys are wandering through these 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 box canyons, kind of getting lost, getting turned around here, and then you find yourselves face to face with this oh, who knows how old mine entrance. Now you didn't even know this place necessarily had any mines, but this certainly doesn't look like it's been used all that all that recently. You find out in front there's all sorts of these old rusted uh, kind of broke down pieces, you know, tools, none of which are salvageable for any sort of, of means. You can see that the front of the mine itself has been sort of broken open here and there. Like it, someone had holed it up at some point, kind of taken the, you know, but someone looks like burst out, like, or at least broke down as there's all sorts of shards of wood everywhere and there's little droplets of blood uh, ever so often. Is there, um, did we follow the tracks of the cows this way? Yes. Go ahead and oh. roll, because at a certain point, you start seeing that the cows kind of got mixed with something else. Like, there was some other track that you found along along with it. Both of you go ahead and roll notice. Oh, good. I get plus two. That'd be fun. <laughs> nope. Hope nope. you make it. for cuspid? Okay. Got seven. All right. All right. Nice. Ives. Ives. I mean... You're tracking. You're good at this. You're you know, this is this is uh, this is one of the things you're better at, right? And you also you got you know you've got keen eyes here and there, right? A couple things you notice. First, you notice that the boards that were breaking this thing up, as you start to do a little bit of examination, it looks as though they've been kind of exploded outward, right? Rather than someone kind of just ripping them off, like like. Like someone pushed up against the inside of this thing and just erupted out of it in some way. And you see that and, and on some of these boards, there's all sorts of these claw marks here and there as well. And it's hard to kind of suss out exactly what might make it, but definitely, definitely looks like these weird scrapes and claws and such. And you do think that the blood is is relatively fresh as well, not in the sense that it's it's probably within the same frame as as the as the mud that you found earlier it could be maybe this morning maybe late last night and that type of deal it hasn't fully you know hasn't fully gone like brown black yet there's still a, a hint a hint of red left to it and as you're staring at the entrance you hear echoing from deep down in this dusty old mine you hear the sounds of cow cow whatever the hell Well, I think something's in there that wants us to go look for cows. Dr. Cuspid's already dismounting and just has a <laughs> giant grin on his face. Okay. You know what they say, doctor? The things that happen in the dark stay in the dark. You keep the light on my back as I get my pistols out. Okay. Let's go get you some new teeth. All right. I, was I like you. you. Oh, God. <laughs> a love story was born. And the two men were never seen again. <laughs> <laughs> we are dead. That's going to be great. Okay, so we, as you two plunge into the, this abandoned old mine, we'll switch back over to Anna and Eustace, who have come across a young boy who is hand-feeding these two docile cows, treating them like pets on the ground. What, how do the two of you want to handle this? So, Jeff, I, I have one question about this. Yeah, go ahead. Are these, were we looking for cows that are already branded? Yes. This... Good. Good question. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, roll so a then... notice test at a di uh, this is at a distance. Uh, you know, keeping you know keeping before you've fully alerted the boy. Uh, okay. Go ahead and roll a notice if you want. See if they and you're looking for the brand specifically. Three. Eustace, you can do the same thing if you like. Oh, Eustace wasn't looking. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Thank you, Adam. <laughs> you think you think that. He's lured him into a false sense of security. I maybe. I I'm trying to figure out if those are if those are the cows we're looking for. Oh, let's go say hey. Okay. So Eustace will wander up there. He'll look at the kid's hand holding the hay, and he'll be like, "Hey." Oh hey there, Mister. Hey now, you uh, you come up on silently, please. They're very, 
They're very upset right now, and any sort of sudden movements might alert them. They're very, they're very stressed. Okay, this here, uh, it's okay, Penelope. You just hear like a mmm, and he just turns and he looks at one of them, this sort of brown, you know, kind of brown color, you know, steer, and he's like, it's, it's okay, Penelope. The, the, the man's not going to hurt you. Ain't that right, mister? He ain't going to hurt her none, right? I don't really much particularly care for the particulars of hurting animals. That ain't my right, I think that's a no, Penelope. I think that's a no. And Stevie, no. you just stay there. You're telling me you'll be better in the morning. Don't worry. Now. You can ask old Aloysius. I don't like to hurt animals. People, well, I like hurting. And he kind of gets this, like, his <laughs> face just flushes, goes white, like, that mean you gonna hurt me, mister? Well, I'm are just you a boy. Well, of course you I'm people. No, you're just a boy. You ain't people. There's only Look, one of you. But boys are people. If there's more than one of you. So I if like I him. had a friend here, oh, it'd be too you'd bad. hurt us? Oh, yes, I would. Uh, I'm just kidding around. I'm just joking. Don't, I'm just going to dismount <laughs> off of Bella. <laughs> don't go thinking that I'm going to go be like crazy or nothing. I don't know why I'd ever think that, mister. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's awful silly. <laughs> hey. So I want you to meet my friend Anna. Uh, Anna. Well, which I, one is it? Well, I keep thinking it's Anna because that's all I know is Anna. I've, that's all I've ever heard, but she says it's Anna. It must be. And like, I keep telling you, I'm not blonde hair, blue eyed. I'm not Anna. I'm Anna. Well, well hi and how there. about you there, little one? Hi there, Miss Anna. Yeah. My name's Franklin. How do you, Franklin? I, I do quite well. What, what can what can we do for you? We haven't done nothing. We didn't steal nothing. The hay was just on the ground. And that means it's free. It wasn't in no bale or nothing. Um, hay doesn't really cost money. It's not really our concern. So now that I'm closer, I want to look for that brand. Right, and now you don't need a roll. You definitely can see that both of them have the lazy ass brand. So I'm gonna kind of point to the brand and kind of elbow Eustace. Make sure he saw what I saw. You can't tell if Eustace saw what you saw. <laughs> kind of looking over and seeing that Eustace did not give me an indication um, on a out loud, we'll say to Franklin. Um, so it appears those cattle that you are uh, caring for there are uh, they're already spoken for. Those are not yours. I never said they were mine. They're just my friends. I don't believe in ownership over animals or nothing like that. They're just my friends. We've been hanging out together since the winter. Hey there, what's your name again? My name's Franklin. That's right. You just said Franklin. Okay, Franklin. Is it all right if I step down off of this horse? Yeah, as long as you ain't meaning to hurt any of us. You ain't people. We're good. Okay. Yeah. All right. So when did you meet Penelope? No, I met I met both of them at the same time. They were down by the oh, river, right. and they were they were just kind of sloshing around and looked like one of them fell in and didn't know how to swim. And I just helped mm. them on out and such. And we've been friends ever since. And that was a while back now, a couple m months at least. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, you've we slept just... since then. Oh yeah, yeah, many days, weeks, months. The sun's come up and down like. At least a dozen times, maybe more. I don't really know how to count, mister. Got home? Well, this whole area is my home. This is just nature. This is where I live. How old is you? Me? Like yep. I said, I don't much know how to count, but, you know, I've seen quite a few days starting in, so I don't know, probably 45 or something. I'm not really sure. Surely you're older than 45 years old. I mean, you 45 think? days old. 
Right. I don't know. You guys get the sense he's probably around 12, 13 or so. All right. Well, you see, we is what Anna may call in a conundrum. Because she's smarter than me. And don't forget that. But, uh, well, these cows, your friends, they don't even belong to us. They belong to people we work for. Penelope, Stevie, they belong to themselves, you know? They're just exploring their God-given right to freedom and, you know, happiness. We well, look out for each other, you know? Yeah, but, I mean, there's more than just the two of them where they come from, and the rest of their family's been asking about them. Well, like, they haven't been asking about their family. Wait, they haven't I, seen I, much to care about it, money, mo any, any of them at all, no. Why don't you ask Penelope about Pipistrella and see if uh, see if Penelope remembers Pipistrella, because Pipistrella's been asking about Penelope this whole time. All right, I'll ask her. Hey, Miss Penelope, you know, uh, you know, you know, cattle named Pipistrella. And you just hear like, like a little uh, chomps a bit on the hay and stuff. Well, I don't know, Mister. Go ahead and roll persuasion. <laughs> oh, the names. Pipistrella. Oh. I really want this to work. <laughs> can spend a Benny. I'm going to spend all my Bennies at the front of the game. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So, well, she did say, she, yeah, she knows someone named Pipistrella. Yeah. Now, but I, hmm. I don't want her to leave, though, mister. They're all I got. Well, you don't have any family? You ain't got no. no family? I ain't got no family. You ain't never had no family? I don't know. None that ever want to keep me. You want some family? I mean, I don't know what's so great about it. If I had it, they got rid of me, so it couldn't have been that good. Well, you know, sometimes there's a man. And that man will, he's, he's a dude. And sometimes there's a man who's not a dude and he's going to get the job done. So maybe, just maybe, uh, you know, whoever had you was a dude. Now, people we work for, they ain't dudes. And I imagine, seeing as how you took care of Penelope and Steve for months now. We took care of each other. They took care right. of me just as much as I took care of them. Well, then I think that it, it'd only be right that you would get a reward for returning them. Reward, and trust huh? me, no matter what happens to you in life, you always get what's coming to you. Kind of looks kind of askance at that. It was like, I mean, you should look at me. I made a lot of mistakes. I got what was coming to me. But good people that do good things get good things coming to them. What do I got coming to me then that's so good? Dude, well, I mean, you didn't truly answer my question on whether or not you want family. I don't know. Maybe. You inviting me to come with you? You gonna be my mama and pappy, Miss Ann? You gonna be my mammy? I don't, Can I call wait. you mama? No. I, think, no. I think you're a bit old for that. I, I call think this you, one papa. I think do, you get... I'm sorry, Anna. We do have some good people. And you... I mean, I have to say, you do seem to have a way with these animals here. And we we're going to be moving a lot of animals through. We do speak the same language. That would be mighty useful. But I think what you might want to stick to is 
just learn somebody's first name and just call them that name. Okay. I'm Anna. Just call me Anna. Oh, okay. Anna or Anna. You just said them both. You got all <laughs> mad at him before when he said one and then the other. Now I'm just confused. Well, it's Anna. Trust me. Even Anna. though sometimes she'll say Anna. Yeah, Anna. Yes, sir. So hey, you're you don't saying need to call if... me, sir. Yes. It's all right. Unless you just want to, but I I really haven't deserved being called sir. And what is your name? Used to Salesworth. Yeah, I'm gonna call you sir. It's a little bit easier. Anyway, you saying if I bring a bring old Penelope and Stevie back to you, I can like Hang out with all the other ones as well. We will talk to put, them and such. Put in a good word for you. We're not in charge, but I think we could put in a real good word for how well you've been doing with Penelope and Steve. And yeah, you, you've got the gift. The gift of gay right. with cows. All right. Now. Can you just give me a moment with them before we go back? We just you know, just want to, and we can go back together. I ain't got no horse, so I got to ride which one, y'all. All right, you can ride on, you can ride on old uh, Aloysius. I'll walk. All right, so he takes a moment. The three of them as, talk. As he's talking to him, I'm going to watch him just in case, because Eustace sure. don't trust no one. <laughs> you don't see anything untoward. They're just okay. talking, and he kind of hugs and kind of, gives him some of the hay and then eventually like he hops on the horse with you and y'all start moving back you got two cattle and we'll switch over to <laughs> to those who are about to die okay this is gonna be wonderful <laughs> so, so excited you guys enter into a abandoned mine yes. <laughs> okay uh, let's see which one those are you two right all right let me pull you on over to a wee bit of a map here Ooh. Ah. all right there we go okay so one second just getting a few things situated here <laughs> One second. Just moving a few things around. I didn't set everything yet. I know what I gotta do. That's right. Is there a lot of fancy stuff on this map? Not really. Okay. Hopefully that should work. Alright. So you guys, the two of you, wander into a map. Or excuse me, into a mine. Okay, so we've got, so you got right behind you, you guys probably moved in about 20 or 30 feet. You've got, you know, this periodic sound of something kind of skittering nearby, the sound of, you know, dirt coming down from the ceiling. You hear the creaks of uh, what looks like these, these broken reinforcement uh, beams that are kind of crossing from one side to the, the mine to the next. You can tell that sort of this is, this is, particularly downtrodden and every so often you just hear kind of echoing from deeper down into the and deep is to the right i should say uh on the screen um you hear the sounds of what well, sounds like a, a cow in distress what would you two like to do here head on in yes let's try and be quiet but i do think there's something feeding upon the cattle let's move in oh, i agree i agree Okay, you can move up a bit. So you should have control of your character there, uh, right. token. And yeah, I'll, I'll, since he wants both hands on guns, I'll be the one that volunteers to have a hand holding a torch okay. or whatever or a lantern. Sure, sure. I'm gonna assume that then you guys, but you both have a decent amount of uh, light around you. I don't. It's yeah. always a cool idea, but it always ends up kind of me being more pain in the ass sometimes than it, than it really is. 
Uh, okay, so you guys move in a little bit further. You can see what definitely looks like these old, abandoned, rusted mine carts. You see a cave in on your left as you, as you pass by, just to the north of you, and you kind of don't really see anything of, of too too much interest. You notice that the like the actual rail cart itself has sort of been ripped apart, and every everywhere you're looking, it just looks like stuff has sort of caved in every now and then. Uh, go ahead and roll a notice roll. Both of you can roll, roll notice. Let me know how you do. So I'm not to, on the screen at the moment. Very glad that you've got good notice. No, six. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so just a pass. Okay. So you you notice as you're moving in, eyes that there's like even more of these beams, these reinforcement beams and rafters, stuff like that, everywhere you go. And even some of the, the wooden planks and some of the uh, sort of the metal, metal tracks here and there, all of them have that kind of same sort of scrapping, you know, like, like that sort of, not scrap, excuse me, claw mark type of thing going on. And like a few of them you can see even have like these little kind of kind of puncture marks as if something was sort of like kind of slammed against them in such a way, like tap, tap, tapping away here and there. And again, the further you get in there, you still hear that periodic of the cow just freaking out. But you notice that like all of the wood, all of the rafters, all of the reinforcement beams that you think would keep the mine sort of in place have been sort of ripped and torn away. And I would say with your notice roll, you, you suspect that this cave in to the north is likely was not caused like accidentally. And you could tell from some of the, the sort of like someone brought it down by whatever it is that they did to some of these beams by all those claw marks kind of ripping it down here and there. I think maybe there's something terrible in here and somebody went through a lot of work to keep it held inside, but we're about to find it. I know this is something good here. Might be some of my kinfolk. We'll have to see what we get. <laughs> okay. I think we're going to need to talk more in the future, Mr. Ives. I feel that we are... <laughs> Like peas and carrots. <laughs> it's cute that you think that you guys have a future. Uh, okay, um, you get you move up a little bit further, and you can see there's sort of a, an old rusted like spin spit, like uh, where like the, the two different uh, like there's two different rail car like rail tracks that kind of go off in different directions. You see what looks like more debris all over the place, old rusted. Uh, in some cases, just ripped apart, like mining equipment here and there that have been kind of thrown about. Looks like there's been a whole little piles left and right of all like this, you know, it looks like coal and stuff that's been sort of tossed here and there. It doesn't look like there's anything of too much value in here. You don't see any signs of veins that suggest like any sort of, you know, special metals of any kind. Uh, but um, as you start moving in, you, you realize that like both tracks kind of go off and much much different directions but the echoing of the of the moon seems to become it's 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 fairly close but it does seem to be kind of with your with your role kind of veering a little bit more to the right if that makes sense or just the right okay do i see any signs of this blood trailing in uh yeah i'll say with your with your notice uh because cuspid got a raise we'll say there are little little bits of blood along the way here and there yeah yeah, most and most definitely. Falling towards the right as well. Yes. Looks like we're on the right path here. Okay. Um, are you guys keeping yourselves quiet, or are you guys just sort of marching along, singing a tune? Kind of quiet, skulking. Yes. Okay. Why don't you guys roll stealth? Each other. I think you guys should roll stealth. I'm terribly sorry. I'm not so good at this. <laughs> I got a four. This is great. Nice. There you go. Oh. There you I go. meant to say I'm very good at this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we roll something really fast. I hope this is what I think it is. I'm very excited. What do you think it is? Well, I do have academia cult. I, I would do you want to roll? Way... Yeah, I mean, I do you do. want to roll now? But right now, I'd say since you don't see anything, minus two. Yeah. Right? Like, once like you, so you can wait if you want. I'll wait. Okay. But Dr. Cuspid has a suspicion. He's very excited. Okay. All right. So you guys start veering off to the right a little bit. You following these 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 
specks of blood. Go ahead, why don't you sort of move up right to about where I'm pinging there if you want, guys. Oh, why Chuck's, Chuck's token so weird. Okay, and so it's at this point, as you guys start to weave around this sort of central split, and you hear again the sounds of the going off, you look over, and your light shines just far enough that you get the... Ve it's, like, not so far as in to, like, really kind of give away your position. John, you see, like, as you're, as you're veering around the wall, like, you, you step back at the last second and kind of keep the, the lantern just a little bit covered here and there and just kind of giving yourself just a little bit to make it... You don't really have... We'll say it's probably, like, very gray inside. But you see that one of the cattle is currently being fed upon uh, by a very peculiar-looking creature. Uh, uh, humanoid, definitely. About maybe four feet tall or so. But with a fairly big head. Like, the head is, is abnormally large. And you can see, like, it's just sort of ripping in to the side of one of these steer with his claws. You do notice, though, that their uh, uh, eyes up, up close, you do see that there is a second steer that's behind, that's kind of roped up and tied up with, like, this old kind of mining equipment to, to some little stub. It looks like there was some kind of uh, contraption back here. It uh, looks like there was some kind of stage or elevated platform. And the second steer is, is living, doesn't seem to have any issues, and is sort of tie, and is tied up. And that one's like mooing in distress, and the other one's sort of mooing in pain. Looking at that one that's currently being fed upon by this creature, you're not confident that thing's going to survive, uh, whether you get in there and do anything or not. But the other one looks okay. Cuspid, at this point, you can roll your... You can roll your your check if you'd so like. Is this I a know, chupacabra? I know. <laughs> oh, you think it's a chupacabra, do you? Okay. I don't know. I Ives only knows about one monster, and I don't. Think and the rolls continue. Okay, so uh, this is what's called um, a Tommy Knocker, Doctor Cuspid, oh, not uh, okay. not a chupacabra. Yeah. So. It was so exciting. It's uh, basically they're, they're they're carnivorous. They're kind of these abominations. They they tend to this tends to be where they lurk, kind of deep in mines and stuff here and there. And you've probably read about how they have a tendency to prey on miners by uh, damaging all sorts of like support beams and stuff, sabotaging the infrastructure and trying to cause like mm -hmm. strategic collapses of the mine here and there, so they can like isolate different groups, different surviving groups here and there. And that's likely what you're seeing along the way. Um, but uh, yeah, they're they're, you know, they try to pick pick off the weak ones as best they can, and um, let's see, you got a raise too, huh? So that's basically what they are. And before I make you do the fear test, uh, I'll tell you one other thing: is that they have uh, like burrow abilities. They're very good at like they're very good at mm -hmm. kind of digging down into the earth mm -hmm. and popping up anywhere. And that's one of the ways, like, when they cause the cave-ins, it doesn't really affect them too much, but it affects all the others. And sometimes they even suffocate miners and workers and stuff by blocking them off in the mine. Now, I need you both to make a fear test as you look at this thing. As it's ripping through, you see, like, entrails and intestines of the this now near-dead uh, this near dead <laughs> cattle's laying on its side and just being ripped apart. Uh, so the fear test is a spirit roll. Yep. And it's free action. Spirit. There you are. Uh, at a minus two, I should say. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. Ah. You what guys are. Is going this, on. this is like. I'm not going to do good here. Yeah, I got a zero. I'm oh. so excited. <laughs> so, I mean, it makes sense because you are not fear. Like, fear is not. <laughs> yeah, well, I, haven't, I got the night terrors hindrance too, and that gives me a penalty there as well. Oh no. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's dark. It's definitely dark in here. There's no lighter than what you brought. And you didn't critically fail, right? No. There wasn't okay. a fumble, no. So you need to roll, I think, hang on. So let me, let me make sure I'm doing this correctly. Um, so on a failure, you, you basically face a consequence based upon the nature of the fear. In this case, it's terror. Uh, so wild cards must roll in the fear table. Um. You roll at you roll on the table. You roll a d20 and you basically add the monster's feel fear penalty. They, this one's they have a minus two. So 
roll a d20 minus two, and I'll tell you what you got. I'll tell you what happens. Well, I got a 14. All right, so. So while, like, as, as you guys curve around the corner and you're staring this down, Cuspid's face gets, eyes get wide, teeth kind of glint, you know, almost glinting with the reflection of the now, like, kind of slightly muted lantern. And he starts to maybe take a couple steps forward to get a closer look. While this is all happening, John Ives <laughs> takes a look at this thing, sees this, sees like this giant like cow stomach get ripped free from the, the, the carcass of this beast, and this creature just start to gnaw on it. And then um Yeah, you so Cuspid, you're talking about how like, oh, this is a magnificent, wonderful creature. Isn't that right, Mr. Ives? This thing, oh, Mr. It, gets, but it can burrow. Mr. Ives, don't worry. It, I mean, it can burrow beneath the earth. Don't you worry about that. Oh. And, you, oh. and you look around, and Mr. Ives is not next to you anymore. <laughs> as he's, oh, no. as he's panicked, uh, and he is... Actually, wait, you're 14, right? Uh, 14. 14, excuse me. You gain the hesitant hindrance for the remainder of the count, and you're panicked, so... I'm sorry, no, you can't... You don't get... You're not panicked. You gain the hesitant hindrance for the remainder of the encounter. So while as long as you guys stay in here and deal with this thing, you are gonna, you have that hesitant entrance. And so you just see like Ives just sort of starting to sheep back a little bit. You just sort of switch places because Ives was out in front. Cuspid's getting all excited. Ives starting to, to veer back. What do you guys do here? It hasn't noticed you. Uh, actually, oh, good. so good. Then I want to enact something. Actually, this is perfect because I already gave him the cufflinks. I would like to make use of those now. So, so quiet. I'm going to reach up to that strange, over large goat's tooth on my my tie there, and I'm going to twist it. And behind it is another little contraption that will spin some gears, and it will course some energy through it, and it'll begin to hum, just a very light hum. And it will have just a slight glow. And as it does so, little pieces of other, just here and there amidst his vest, other little blue teeth will come out and begin to swirl around. And then as they do, there will be a translucent blue energy that begins to course between these teeth as they create this Bluetooth connection, this BT field, as it were. <laughs> and Fortunately, I'll spend the additional power points to then extend it over to yourself then, Mr. Ives, as you will now have your own circling shield of teeth around you. And I will try to do, uh, what power is it? That is uh, deflection. Okay. Okay, so I'll spend the extra power point to make sure you're included. All right. Okay, so that makes it go off so anybody that tries to attack either of us they have a minus two to hit us nice. okay as you have like the like this weird translucent bt this field around you absolutely amazing here well if you don't mind i say we start shooting this thing in the face <laughs> okay before we do that we're going to quickly shift back to Anna and Eustace as you get back to your meeting point and it's like the sun's going down at this point you notice that Dr. Cuspid and, and Mr. Ives haven't returned yet you've got Franklin and you've got Penelope and Stevie with you you got Franklin who's riding along with Eustace but they haven't returned yet what would you all do in this situation what would the two of you do in this in this situation well I don't know you think I should go and try and find him? I think I should stay here and let you do it. I think... And Anna will turn to Franklin and just say, you know what it means to uh, shake hands and make a deal with someone? To Franklin? He's like, mm -hmm. well, shake hands and Make a deal with it. Well, yeah, uh, yeah, Miss Ann, I, I, I know what it means. Okay. Well, we were supposed to meet some folks that we work with, and they seem to be a bit delayed, and we need to check that out. But I want to shake hands with you that you're going to stay put here, and you and Penelope and Steve are going to be right here when we get back. 
Yeah, right, right here. You make sure you shake hands with Penelope and Steve. Go ahead, shake hands with Beef. Well, like, here's the thing, though, Miss Anna. I thought when you made a deal that there was an exchange of some kind. Like, I am doing what you tell me to do by staying here with Penelope and Stevie. But what, in, what am I getting in return as part of that deal? Well, sometimes a deal is an agreement. It's just a word that oh. we've exchanged words and we've come to an accord. So I'm not getting anything. Okay. Well, um, and Anna will look in her bag and just grab like provisions for food. Say, well, you can get started on uh, dinner if you'd like. Roll persuasion test. Oh, and okay. uh, yeah, go ahead and you can take uh, take a plus one for giving them food. All right, so we'll roll it straight and see what comes. It is... <laughs> oh, goodness. 15. He takes look a look at, at the you. food that you come out, and it's like you've, you've got, like, dried meats and things that you bring out, and he's like, oh, my goodness, I've been eating grass for the better part of two and a half months. So his mouth starts watering, like, oh, oh goodness. And he just starts eating it right away. And you you realize that you, you're, he's probably he's probably fine. Okay, so I'm still gonna but now. Before you can, can you wipe your hand there for a quick second, and Anna will put her hand out. Yeah. Shake. Oh yeah, right there. You go. He shakes your hand. Okay. All right. So um, why don't one of you roll a survival test? The other can um, to track to see if you can track down your missing compatriots, and one of you can roll if you want an assist. If you want to support, you can do that too. Um, uh, you want me to roll it or you want to roll it? Uh, I can help you. What do I need to do to help? Just tell me what you think you can do to help. And you can use any skill you want as long as it makes sense in the situation. You're trying to, you know what you're trying to do. You're trying to track the two of them down. So you just come up with something that makes sense and roll whatever can skill you I think fits. Can I use my riding to look for tracks? Uh, I say probably not to look for tracks, but probably to cover more ground maybe. Like you're just, you're just, you're a particularly okay. adept rider. You can kind of take the horse up onto... You know, places where most of the time they can't be be found or something like that. That's fine. Okay. Go ahead and roll riding. I just wanna I just wanna have an out in case I just wipe the floor with the two of them. I want to uh, guess the potential to be. Uh, okay. I'll go ahead and spend a Benny. Okay. Do that again. That's better four. Okay, go ahead and roll your survival test with plus one, Eustace, as you start to try to track, track down cuspid knives. Oh boy, there you go. Okay, so behind. Right. Okay, and so yeah, you, the two of you eventually pick up their tracks. You pick up, you know, you see the sort of the horse. You, know, you see, you you find the whole like big, you know, bit of cow mud. You kind of track that a bit. You you pick up those kind of strange. Uh, strange tracks of the, you know, like the, the, of that, the, both the cow and sort of some other strange foot. And then it looks like there's a, some horses that are way, horse tracks that are very, very recent. So you kind of pick that up and you start traveling after them, but you're not there yet. So we're going to start up combat. Actually, we're going to start up initiative with the two of them. And then at a certain point, uh, perhaps you guys will join the fray if necessary, or if time uh, works in your favor. Uh, all right, so let me set this up. Two of you are in play. You're in combat. The Tommy Knocker's in combat. And you've got the hindrance on you, right? Chuck? Right. So right. I draw two cards and I get the lower, but Jokers still act normal. I think it's going to do it automatically, but let's find out. Okay. I've got it on my character sheet, so hopefully it does. Okay. It looks like. Okay. It looks like it worked. I think. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So to start off, it's Dr. Cuspid. Dr. Cuspid, you're up first. Uh, what would you like to do? So it's still not aware of us. I'm not sure if there's any bonus to attacking something that's not aware of us. Uh, that's a great question. I think it's the drop. We got to do the whole drop thing, right? Isn't that how that works? Let me pull that up. 
I, I read that at some point. Sorry, this is like only the second time I've run the game, so I'm still kind of learning some things. So, so sometimes an attacker is able to catch a foe off guard and gets the drop on him. Um, uh, so usually it's usually it's like if you're able to sneak up on them. I'll tell you what, if you and it means you would get a plus four. Anything you do from here, from this, mm -hmm. from from range. We'll say you, you take the plus four. If you okay. try to get any closer, though, I'm going to say no, because at that point, like, I think it'll see you, and plus you guys have to have the light, and so at that point, the light will become much clearer. So, so we'll if you do, as long as you keep it range, we'll count it. Well, good. I, I think I will do something from range then, since I'm just within the range of my... Uh, <laughs> another contraption of mine. Okay. Mr. Ives, you will see... You've probably seen a couple of gamblers do the little thing where, like, a little derringer will pop up out of their sleeve. You see something similar to that pop up out of Mr. Cusper's sleeve, except it looks more like a handle. And it's got yet another one of those blue teeth in it. And then coming out of the end of it, there's this large six inch long thing with a hook at the end of it and serrated edges on the inside. It doesn't look like anything that a natural animal would have. And there is a whole cacophony of other teeth that begin rattling along with it as he clicks a button. And once again, the Bluetooth field begins to activate. Is there are multiple blue teeth amidst these? And you see it lash out and it's the bolt power it's meant to be a range attack but the way i flavor it it's more of like a long range like think castlevania chain whip except with teeth and a large thing at the end of it and it can has a range of 16. okay so you want to make sure that you're this has got a size penalty so mm -hmm. Uh, so your bonus will end up only like if you target it when you do your ability, mm -hmm. I think it'll account for it automatically. If not, uh, it's minus one to whatever you would roll, basically. Okay. It's a little bit smaller. Okay, so I will try to. I'll just roll and I'll do a plus three since I've got a plus four but minus one. Yeah, go ahead. So I'll do that. I'll do the raise to. I'll put an extra power point into it to pump some extra energy in. Oh, yes. Wow. Okay. So what's the, so, so yeah, that, that definitely so it would have been work. 3d6, but because of the raise, it's, it's going to be 4d6. Okay. Go ahead. Only 10. Ah, oh, man. Uh, 10 is still enough to exceed its toughness with a raise. In fact, uh, okay. so Describe your kill there, Dr. Cuspid, as this thing, wow. that is enough, actually, to take it out. It's this strange. It's like, imagine the teeth on a chainsaw, except they are actual teeth. As he pops the little handle up out of his wrist, like right there, whips it out. This giant chain of teeth comes out, wraps around the thing, spins around, and then comes back to him and just chainsaws the thing as if a chainsaw could <laughs> embrace a man and tear it to shreds. So this thing gets, gets ripped apart, e even worse than the very cattle itself. Ives, however, you notice, <laughs> you notice that the earth kind of begins to shake a little bit. You hear like these strange, like squeaking sounds here, like And the earth begins to shake here and there as you notice popping up let me add these other ones that I mean oh, add no. to the track. Oops, that's not supposed to happen. You're not supposed to show up dead. One second. Why is that showing up dead? <laughs> Our <laughs> Hang on one second. Uh, Why? All right. Okay. Let me add them in. Okay. So that was Cuspid's turn. So then uh, Ives, you hear from somewhere just uh, to the north of you. Uh, you hear the sounds of like one of those screeching sounds, and you hear what's, what, what is a bit like the earth rumbling ever so slightly. And you see suddenly popping out of the ground, like right next to you, as if bursting through the wall itself. Uh, you see one of these creatures is literally right on top of you. Uh, sorry, there we go. Uh, and then that'll be that's all I can really do this round and then it'll come to you Ives as the other one would uh, well 
I'm going to do like any proper gentleman does in this situation and shoot it in the face. Okay. So my first shot. Yeah, and if you target, I think it should work. Oh, I forgot to target it. It's okay. There, it's targeted. All right. So first shot's a hit. Yeah, that's definitely a hit. Uh, so go ahead and roll your damage. Oh my god. Nice. <laughs> this thing <gasps> bursts out of like the ground and the wall and like right as it does, it's like right in your face. <laughs> his claws kind of out. And you just hold up your gun and <laughs> right in the face. <laughs> Canoe where its head used to be as it just <laughs> falls now down to the ground. Wow. <laughs> Beautiful yeah. eyes. Beautiful. Oh, that's right. a shot there. I'm sorry. Jesus. I might have fucked the teeth up on that one. It okay. was worth it. Worth it. All right. New round begins. He's out. Why does that keep doing that? It's so weird. All right. There we go. All right. So this one's dead right next to you. Here's a third one. Uh, Cuspid, it's your turn. But you hear, you still hear the sounds of something screeching from inside, but you can't necessarily, you don't see anything right now. Hmm. Well, I imagine these things do like to come up close. Actually, I might look around. Are there any support beams nearby? That's what I'll begin to look for. Yeah. Because I know can... these things like to cave things in upon us. Yeah. You uh, you look up. <laughs> you can see that the beam above you is kind of cracked down the middle. And right next to where Ives is standing, you can see already like the vertical beam has been sort of ripped off the side. And it won't take much more for the very top of this mm. this uh, this tunnel to just sort of fall in on top of you. Ives, uh, look above and be aware. And meanwhile, if, if that's my action, that's good enough. If it's not, yeah. I'll just that's kind good. of like, I'll hold action to blast. Okay, you hold something I see. Okay, fair enough. Uh, then it is Ives' turn. Uh, well, not having a target, I'm going to break off and start heading over to try and grab that other cow. Okay. Mm, smart. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and you can, can I see make it, it clear over there or just part of the way there? What's your pace? Uh, I think it's like one square per pace. And if you like spend your whole action, I'll say you can get six. there. Six. Yeah, it's normally yeah. six unless you have an edge. Yeah, so it's like so it would be you can get there if you spend like everything because you can I'll do movement this. and an action. Yeah. You can get to it. Yeah, I'll spend everything to go get that cow. Yeah, go ahead and roll a fear test as you wander past this disgusting display of eviscerated ca uh, cow. <laughs> this is for uh, nausea any... specifically. No, no penalty. Just a normal spirit test. Okay. Uh, no. No. Okay. Do you uh, want to re-roll that? You want to eat yeah, your Benny or anything? I'll Benny that out. Okay. Oh, there you go. All right. There we go. All right. Wow. You feel... We started with three Bennies, right? You start with three, yeah. Okay. And then we got an extra one at the beginning because of our generous viewers. Right. Yes. You feel a little, like, vomit kind of bile. Uh -huh. As you, oh, and it's, and it's, oh, but you manage to hold and you look up and you can see that the cow over here has got this horrible, horrible, terrified look in its eyes, but it sees you and it's just like, you can tell it's sort of freaking out a bit here and there and you kind of reach out and you can see that it's, it's already been tied up at this point as if it's getting ready. And also as you come in here, you, you also notice that uh, off to your left on the other side, uh, why does, why does John Ives' stuff, I'm going to go ahead and. You see that you see the third one that's been yeah. that's been missing. Let me go ahead and configure so everyone can see it now. Token vision is no longer needed. Let's do that. Okay. So people should be able to see everything at this point. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, all right. So then go to a new round of combat. Cause that one's dead. And it will be keeps giving me the wrong way. There it is. It'll be the Tommy Knocker's turn. Uh, okay. Can I ever even get a freaking attack off? Let's see. <laughs> sorry, I'm still learning. That's the wrong Terribly thing sorry. It was that. poor sportsmanship on our part, but it That's seemed the right thing to do. 
murder that is. Uh, let's see. Generally, it's the right course of action. I can in get the spirit over. of protection, of course. I can get over to uh to eyes. Give or take. I'm yeah, like I can get over to preventative eyes. medicine. I'm All like right. That. I get one attack. Yay. Okay, here we go. You can do it. I believe in you. I can do this. I have all these I have all these bennies that I can use. Uh fight. That's so bad. I'll spend a benny. Are you kidding me? That again. I All right. Well, good night everybody. These guys are weak. They're they're only extras. They're not like pretty strong, but like there are three of them and there are only two of you in here. I thought I had a chance. Okay, go ahead. Uh then it's your guys' turn. I think Dr. Cuspid's up I think first. Cuspid is next, yeah. Well, well, seeing as it did not try to bring the house down upon my head, I'll move forward just slightly. Okay. Get myself a nice, clear line of view, and I, I think I'll do more of the same from earlier. All right, go ahead. Finish I'll this Once off. more, send forth the uh, chain whip, as it were. Just make extra power point. I think I will Benny that. Oh, goodness. That's a terrible roll. That's almost a crit. Okay, could fail, I mean. Almost. That is not that good either. Yeah, okay. Well, I'll oh, just... Goodness. Uh, Dice karma's bouncing out. That's fair. So uh, you you sort of reach out. You try to kind of focus and, and do what you did before, but something... Maybe it's just too far. Maybe it's too dark. Maybe it's too close. You're too worried about maybe accidentally kind of I getting... Really... At this point, I would like to say I'm, I'm at least slightly partial to Ives, and I don't want to accidentally <laughs> decapitate him. That is I very will noble. Marginally rein in my desire for blood. Okay. All right. So let's go to the next round. Actually, no, it would be Ives. I'm sorry. Right, Ives, finish this thing off. Yeah. All right. First shot. That'll hit. Seven. Go for it, man. Shaking. Uh, let's see. It's shaking. Okay. Uh, I will. I still have some. I still have some bennies, so I might as well just spend them to do a soak, right? Or is that just for wounds? No, I can. I can do that to try you to soak shaking. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can soak shaking. So that is vigor. These have really good vigor, so. But why bother? <laughs> just, just, I'll spend another one. So it's one, two, three. Okay, I got more. I'm out. Fucking liars. And I'm out. I'm out. All right, I take my second shot. All right, go ahead. This is with my offhand, so it's a negative two. <laughs> okay. Ooh. It's one. All right, here you go. You got it. All right, you need a beat. As long as you beat six, it's dead. Oh, that's... Yes! Oh, God. Describe how you just <laughs> yeah. obliterate this thing, Chuck. Oh, I uh, can't get the teeth now. So as it's close to me, I just take my second pistol and I just insert it into its mouth ah, and just squeeze sorry. the round off in the back of its head. <laughs> And the head just explodes backwards. The face is still relatively intact. It's a little swollen and busted here and there. But there's no hole in the back of its head. So you've canoed one, and you've created a back entrance to its brain, which <laughs> isn't there anymore, but that's fine. <laughs> we'll say it's around this time that Eustace and Anna, you, 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 you're at the mines. You see their horses. It's very dark out at this point, and you hear gunfire from inside the mine. Without really saying a word, Eustace will hop off the horse and run inside. Okay. Anna will be right behind. No torch, yeah, you, no light, no nothing. Just run two, straight in. Yeah, you two go stumbling through. More than once, Eustace, you fall and trip over something, but eventually you see what sounds like, what looks like light. And we'll say at long last, like the four of you have, have joined it, but you get there just in time as like Ives blows the back of this one's head out, clear onto the ground blood everywhere brains everywhere there's an erupted cow like right in the middle there's another one that's got a canoe for a head that's laying on the ground a few feet behind cuspid and like you walk in and cuspid's just got this huge grin on his face yeah. he's already walking over towards one i just 
Oh, I would be. <laughs> is the one cow that was filleted still alive? Uh, no, 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 not at all. Okay, not, good. Not, not at this point, I'm going to say. Okay. Yeah, I would be helping Dr. Cuspid. First thing, I'll go gather some teeth, and then I'm going to drag these bodies up and tie them so we can drag them back. Okay. What did you all encounter here? We, uh, we ran across a lovely young man that uh, took to pet a couple of the uh, cattle. You seem to have come across someone much less friendly. So we have both had delightful afternoons. That's was, great to hear. Yes. Well, these these are called Tommy knockers. They typically like to feed upon miners, but in this case, it seems they try to gather upon the cattle, and uh, they've done their best to collapse in the mine tunnels here, but Ives' quick shooting is just top-notch, as it were. That, uh, that tooth whip's pretty handy, too. Well, I do my best. I try not to disappoint my friends. It was not disappointing one bit. Why don't tooth you whip? All... Tooth whip. It was damn near cool, and there was this cool blue light swirling around us. You are a man of... Science. <laughs> sure. Yeah, oh. it affected. <laughs> it appears. Look at this. Look at this thing. Look at it. <laughs> Can, nice. can Anna even make sense of the body that this used to be with all of this destruction? Um, I would say uh, I think Eustace and Anna should probably roll a fear test just for the sheer gore of the area because between what Cuspid and Ives did to these things, what those things kind of look like in this poor, poor you know, cattle right in front of you. <laughs> it's just an absolute disgusting bloodbath. There's brains and organs everywhere. So roll spirit, both of you. Uh, no penalty. Uh, uh, and I would say, like, they almost look like kind of fairly short people with very big heads, uh, but they're not, like, some of them kind of, it looks like they have what looks like tatters of possible clothing on here and there, but it's not, like, proper clothing. It's, like, rips and shreds here, and there may be something that they grab for miners just to keep warm or whatever it might be. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Eustace, you're good with a four. Anna, you did a raise. Uh, you did a Benny. You got a raise. Yep. You guys, again, it's kind of, oh, goodness. Uh, but then you, you kind of keep it together. And you'd have recovered this other steer, at least. We got a cow. Hey, Dr. Cuspid. Y'all don't need us around now, do you? Wait, if you, you want to help us drag these self. bodies back. Yeah. Oh, I suppose I uh, could drag some bodies back. You sure there ain't any more? Well, if like, we're lucky, there might be. It could be a whole nest of them. Might it's be. possible, but they have, you can see where they've already caved in several of the uh, other tunnels. Um, as much as I would love to go hunting for them, I fear for the safety of us if we delve too deep. That's true. Dr. Cuspid, what do you think would happen if someone were to eat a little bit of one of these things? Well, that is an interesting question. Now, you know, I'm aware of these creatures, but I don't know that much about how they originate. I would say typically uh, imbibing upon the flesh of them is not a good thing. There are many a monster where they the transformation is some sort of uh, uh, infliction of their own self upon yourself, so to speak. Uh, I would not recommend it. So what you're saying, if I eat one of these, I become one of these? I'm not saying that you may just get very sick and die. Mm. Well, either way, I'm already promised to something else, so I better not. But, uh, yeah, we did good work here. You two missed out on the fun. It, actually, though, we've possibly been able to recruit someone else to help us on our drive. He's quite good with the animals. Well, oh, Miss Tabo, you just never fail to amaze. Well, I'm hoping maybe once we get back, I can uh, take another crack at Devil Eyes because that, that's just a It's an inevitability that you go on to crush his spirit beneath yours. So I mean, I... It's become your white whale. Pref and I, I don't know if you're referring to something there, but it is a task. I prefer to establish a relationship with the horse and not Bo quite be see thick. it. Mm. You don't read? Right in the eye. I, I don't. Yeah, it's. You do? 
Well, why read when you can be read to? I mean, I would like to argue with you, but still, that that do read is something very soothing to be read to. Yeah, you got a lot of books, don't you? I like hearing them. Well, okay then. Something to do around the fire at night. I can give you a little harmonica accompaniments, and we can all we can all learn something. You know what I? That sounds delightful. I'm going to I'm going to make some cufflinks for you too as well. Some Tommyknocker cufflinks. I got pig cufflinks. They're really nice. Are they for for Are they for decor? They have other uses. The blue light thing when he twists his tie. I would think proper decorum would be to accept a gift. It, you got to refuse it three times and then you accept it. That's, that's the true. proper. Yeah, if, you, if you're worried about appearances. Yeah. But, you know, if, you're, if you're wearing teeth cufflinks, then I would assume you're awfully worried about appearances i'll, I'll need to to treat them uh, in, in a solution later tonight but uh, i should have them ready for you within a day or two I... dr cuspa do you need this one cow's sure. teeth as well i mean waste not one not correct that uh, sounds good enough for me i'll get to work with my knife how is that just i like you Every good Dr. Frankenstein needs is Igor. Yeah, incredibly well weighed group, aren't we? Hey. <laughs> you don't have an atom, do you? Not just yet, but I have been looking into a few things. So we did leave our new friend, uh, young Master Franklin. Uh, back with some cattle that we were able to to gather. We should See. probably get back. Hey, right. so wait, what's that? What's that off in that direction there? As I, I look around at uh, something I see shining off in the distance. Oh, and uh, where, what's the deepest point in this cave? Uh, probably to the south. Uh, there looks to be like it kind of goes off the map, but both the northern and southern tracks they kind of go a little bit further inward, but then eventually they come to what clearly is an intentional collapse. So, like, yeah, every see- which way seems to be co- intentionally collapsed. Yeah, you see that glinting over there? I don't, uh, but I'm gonna look at it. I'll see it. Yeah, let's go over there. I got, I gotta know what it is. And uh, I'll start going heading towards the southern part of the cave, and I swear I see something. I got uh, no ideas. What do you know? What is it then, well, Eustace? I don't know. Uh, I I go on over to the, towards the south end, and I I, I I take a double look and wait. I how? What you say about these? That they? What are they? Well, they call me. Tommyknockers. They they tend to cause cave-ins. They normally feed upon miners. Uh, seems they took what cattle they could find now. Tommy knockers. Correct. And I'll, I'll bring my hand up on the on the the rubble or you know one of the support beams, and I'll just knock on it. I wonder I'm if that'll do anything. I'm doing that. Okay. I want to start reloading. Okay, you knock. I, yeah, you knock. You knock a little bit. Sure. I just sure, gotta sure. know. Don't worry about it. Okay. Hmm. All right. Uh, you just go ahead and uh, roll like an agility test if you've got it, or athletics would be fine, actually, if you have athletics. Oh, yeah, everyone's got athletics, I think, actually. That's common skill. But yeah, roll athletics. Oh. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, damn. Dear goodness. <laughs> 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 you go up, you knock a bit, and then as you do, like you hear like, but this like through the through the sound, you know, through the through the wall, like this collapsed earth. You hear the sounds of things kind of moving and scraping and 
And then all of a sudden above you, you watch as more of the roof above you just begins to collapse and fall on top of you. But you manage to like leap back and tumble out of the way as like a whole like five or six feet worth of tunnel just begins to implode upon itself right where you are knocking. I love to indulge curiosity as much as the next man, but I think at a certain point you have to stop tempting fate. Yeah, but now I, I look, is is that that part clear at all now? Oh no, because nothing's of... clear. Like it's it's just getting worse. <laughs> like everything's oh, okay. just getting worse. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get to let's get to going. Are you sure about that? Because I mean I believe there was a young gentleman earlier who made it clear that for all the ruffian sort of nonsense we could get into, that it would be appreciated. Bringing back cows is more important, and we do have some beeves that we could return. But I wonder if I could figure out their language. Well, I tell you what, I will. Uh, I'll do my best to, and I'll. I'll just. Uh, it, you see, Doctor Cusper take out his ghost steel bowie knife and start taking the head off one of the tommy knuckers later tonight i'll do my best to animate and make its teeth chatter if you feel like listening to it Ooh, I would that satisfy life. you if we leave you now now how does that work are you just like talking to them or science you, i suppose you know you're using your teeth to talk to them or something like that i don't understand how that works i, I ain't never one to figure it out but uh i'm not well, that you smart. know i would love to show you back at the camp not in this mine so if we go back to camp you'll show me i would do everything i can to help extrapolate upon a couple of theories i have now um dr cuspid the young man that we came across today seems to have spent a fair portion of his life fairly isolated just with some maybe livestock for company so yes. i might recommend that we uh move ourselves away from our new friend mr franklin if you're going to take on some mm. of these things well of course i feel like this is the sort of thing that should happen in a private tent of course i, I don't want to disturb anyone i it's been a bit too forward today, but I just could not miss the opportunity, you understand. Hey, let me see that. What's that? Uh, I we, start to wander we... towards the head. Yeah, let's get this in the light. Of yeah, course, let's... there's plenty of light outside. Yeah, yeah I'm going to go get that cow and lasso up one of these bodies and start dragging it out. Anna will help John. Okay. All right, so we'll say... As we're, we're getting near time, we'll start to just wrap it up at this point. You manage to get the cow out. Like, it takes a little doing. The one that's alive is very, like, like it's not like, it doesn't take doing to get it out. It takes doing to get it under control and to not run the hell away from you all. But you manage to, you manage to, to kind of get it settled. You bring out the scraps, whatever you can salvage of, like, the other one, because you don't want to waste all that good meat. And then you manage to get a body and a head of the, of the Tommy Knockers and, you meet up with Franklin and you work your way back. Uh, it's dark by the time you get there, so like people like you could, like Luke was like, "We're getting worried about you. It's a little little light. Try to come back before the sun fully goes." Oh Jesus! Mm. What the hell happened to you? And you guys, because you're covered in blood, Byron, you just cut a head off. It's squirting left and right. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So why don't we end it there and we'll. Um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll pick up uh, on the rest of it uh, when we come back in a couple weeks. Um, yeah, so got three. I think you got three total. It's pretty good. The yeah. fourth one was 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 eaten, so that's okay. And uh, yeah, um, let's do a little closing round table, I guess, and then we'll we'll, we'll kind of dip for the for the night. Uh, start with Jeremy. What else you got going on this week, man? I mean, so we're going to set up some, well, I'll let Chuck talk about what's going on on Wednesday, and then uh, we'll be on Garblight Games over on Thursday at 9 p.m., punching Nazis. That should be fun. Yeah, Matt, to Jack Kadoo. Dawson will be running, yeah, Jamie and I through that, yep. Uh, Adam, what's going on with Grim Perilous? Well, uh, exciting news. We've uh, resumed our play sessions of 
um, Radiator, which is uh, the um, source book for Zweihander that we're creating. It's a post-apocalyptic uh, setting that you can use. It'll have over 18 professions, six ancestries, and all sorts of other options in it. And uh, we are currently airing that on our Patreon for our uh, patrons. And if you're interested in checking that out, and we've got a whole bunch of other materials on there for um, Radiator, you can come by the Patreon and um, sign up and I'm gonna get that link. But yeah, we're, we've just started playing again and um, it is my passion um, game I love running. Um, so I hope y'all would like to check it out. Interesting. And awesome. Jeremy's in it. He's quite entertaining. Adam, Tuesday. Tuesday? What's going on on Tuesday, Adam? Oh, yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow we're playing uh, um, Tribes of Midgard. And um, you can watch Chunk, uh, Chuck, Chunk, yeah, Chunk. Um, like from the Goonies? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Chuck. Um, you can watch uh, Chuck uh, play along with us, maybe get a little drunk, make a few mi mistakes, but regret nothing. And, Classic. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll take down uh, <laughs> the truffle shuffle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe we'll take down the serpent this time around. Awesome, uh, Chuck Defenders. Uh, we got going on. Let's see. Tomorrow, no, Wednesday night. Today's Monday. Wednesday night, nine p.m. Central over on Defenders. Uh, we're continuing on with Thunder Rift, but old school essentials didn't set on me as well as I'd like. So we're going to be doing forbidden lands. So forbidden lands, the basic D and D setting thunder rift, uh, Friday at 10 PM central, we're doing more shadow run using the year zero engine. Uh, and then Saturday, we don't got anything Saturday. I don't think nothing Saturday. I want to no, be hanging out no. with Adam. Yeah. Because you chose Adam over Steven, and Steven's been messaging me every day for the past two, yeah. past like week. He's like, I think Chuck hates me. And I'm like, I think you're right. I, 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 <laughs> I think it's true. The other thing, I don't think it's, I don't think it's just Chuck either. Like, I think it's everybody. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, I don't even. And know I remember, I'm like, I, I'm I talking to Steven. Yeah. I'm not talking to Scout. My bad. My bad. Oh yeah, <laughs> I get those mixed up too. I get it confused yeah. all the time. Yeah, oh, Scout right. too, no less. Scout too. He's been demoted. Scout once, just an angel, basically. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Um, if you don't know what we're talking about, go Steam Still Murder on Sunday because I think it's a Sunday. I think we have. I think it's a it Sunday, Sunday. We got. That I think so. Right. Shadow yeah. Run, and it's a new system. We're starting a new new system oh, too. Yeah. Tech, we're tech doing more. Tech more. Tech more. Yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, all right, and then for Melissa and I, uh, in addition to what has already been mentioned, Friday, uh, the penultimate second to last episode of our Delta Green Impossible Landscapes campaign. We are two episodes away uh, from the end, and uh, yeah, it's very exciting, so come check that out. Uh, Saturday, we'll be back to One Ring Second Edition, so you can come come watch us. That uh, We're on a very long and frightful journey to basically Angmar, so that's a lot of fun. Uh, and then next Monday, we'll be doing UVG as we flip flop between Deadlands and UVG. And you can catch some of the faces here, uh, Sans, Adam, uh, and Matt. But we get uh, a couple other good faces, uh, and, 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 you know, and Joe and Dan. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> and Bert. <laughs> well, no, I was, that was a joke. Bert okay. was one of the good faces. Yeah, Bert. Oh, I was... <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Uh, but that's it. Joke. That's okay. That's fine. Uh, but that's it for us. Thank you for everyone who joined us. Uh, thank you for those of you who threw some bits out earlier to help out the, the players. Players are awesome tonight. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we will uh, probably get the actual cattle drive off the ground uh, next time around. Didn't want to get too far without Matt here. So we did some uh, character stuff and did some of the chores because uh, you're supposed to do some of these. Like It's it's actually all the stuff that we're doing is, is kind of interesting how like the start of it is sort of fleshing out characters. It actually gives you a reason to do things, which is kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and, uh, rate sub one. So hang tight. If you're still in the channel, just follow us and we'll find someone else to, to, to watch the rest of the stuff that you got whatever time you got left on Monday. Uh, so good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Yeah.